Everybody ready? Okay. Uh, zoning board reopening public hearing. Um, we're open. This is a new public hearing tonight for Northeast Utilities. Karen, would you please read it into the record? The Board of Appeals of the Town of Southboro will hold a public hearing in the hearing room of the Southboro, Southboro Townhouse, 17 Common Street, on Wednesday, July 29th at 8.30 p.m. with regard to the petition of Northeast Utilities, 157 Cordoville Road. The petitioner is seeking a special permit pursuant to Section 174-113, Illumination of Signs. A copy of the application may be reviewed at the Office of the Building Department at the Townhouse during normal business hours. Leo F. Bartolini, Jr., Chairman. Karen, would you read the recommendation from the Planning Board, please? To the Zoning Board of Appeals from Jennifer Burney, Town Planner, May 18, 2015, regarding 157 Cordoville Road, Northeast Utilities. In accordance with the section 174-11 of the code of the town of Southboro at its regularly scheduled meeting of May 18, 2015, the planning board met and reviewed the proposed request for a sign at 157 Cordoville Road and reports that one, the sign scale is in reasonable relationship relation to development scale, viewer distance and travel speed and sign sizes on nearby structures. Answer is yes. Number two, the sign size, shape, and placement serve to define or enhance architectural elements of the building, such as columns, sill lines, cornices, and roof edges, and do not unreasonably interrupt, obscure, or hide them. Answer is non-applicable. Non Number three, the sign design in, is in harmony with other signage on the same or adjacent structures and provide reasonable con continuity continuity in, in mounting location and height, proportions and materials? Answer is yes. Number four, the sign materials, color, lettering style, illumination and form are reasonably compatible with the building design, neighborhood, context and use? Answer is yes. Number five, the sign, size, location, design and illumination are not judged to present a safety hazard to vehicular or pedestrian traffic? Answer is yes. All right. Um, you want to step forward, sir? You know, indicate who you are and use the microphone. Okay, before you start, we don't have a proper letter here to give you authority and to do so. Now, on the original application, there's one, which I don't understand what it is to do with the director of the real estate property. Who is the owner of this property? Northeast Utilities. All right, so why does this say director of the real estate property? Can I see that? And then I, I wrote a letter to you two weeks ago requesting you to give us a letter from Northeast Utilities giving you authority to do this, which you gave it to us tonight, which is supposed to have been 10 days ago, to go on public file. So under the condition of it, but this is not really, I mean, I don't know what the board thinks about it, but I just, I, just, I mean, I don't think it's preferable or profit, proper done that way. The issue is, which we're going to change down the road, and I, for this time here, I think with, if the board agrees, we're going to let it go forward. Excuse me, one the other thing, Jeff, you're not sitting on this no. one, you know it, okay. The other thing is that it says applicant name, applicant address, um, contractor phone, and applicant owner. So we're going to property owner's name. I think we're going to redo some of that because basically... The sign people that are getting the sign are the owners of the business, not the landowner. Okay. They may be the same person, but in some places it may be a landowner and another business owner. So that should be the way it is. And technically, there is nobody here from them to answer questions we may ask okay. as the owner of that property or that business, which is an issue. 
So, I mean, we'll go forward and you make your presentation and we'll see the way the board entertains it as we go along. Excuse me, yes, Karen. Actually, the one who did this, we let him read this letter from, and this is in the application. Yeah, well, that, the one in the application, he don't, do you, do you know what that one is? The original authorization in the application. That was given to us by Laura Tano Sign. And who, by who? L Laura Tano Sign, they're in charge of doing the Eversource changeover for all the facilities, and then they subcontract out to other sign companies because they're in Connecticut. You know, but it says property owner. Now, am I reading that wrong? What, on the application? Right there, no. Oh, here? What does that say? No, up above, title. Director of Real Estate and Property Management. Yeah. So the thing is, the board realizes that we'll let you go forward with your presentation, and then as we go along, we'll see whether we'll discuss it or whatever. Okay? So right. go ahead, sir. Um, well, the, I guess the town bylaws. Oh, excuse me. One other question, just sure. everybody knows. The planning board wrote their letter. That's all they put, but they, uh, they did not give any other recommendations. Under the bottom of the letter, it says recommendation by the planning board. But they did not give us any other recommendations other than what Karen read into the file. Okay? Okay, sir. Go ahead. Okay. Um, the facility, like um, Northeast Utilities, is now changing over to Eversource. Um, all New England power companies are becoming Eversource. And um, the Southboro facility is the emergency facility for the Northeast. So basically, if there are companies coming from Canada, you know, New York, Delaware, any place like that, send in utility power companies to work on a disaster in New England, they all come to Southboro to get their jobs, get their equipment, get transformers, wire, whatever they need, poles, things like that. So the um, facility would like to illuminate the sign to make it easier for these people unfamiliar with the area to find the facility. Um, Why? Why? I mean, if they use, they go online or they use their map, that's his map, it's going to tell them how to get there. Yeah. So what is the reason why to use that as an excuse? Well, it's, it's not an excuse. It's the reason why they want to do it. Yeah. To help okay. the people find the facility. Go forward. All right. Um, there. Um, the current sign that was we got a permit for and put up is there now. And what they want to do is the background of the sign is not going to light up just the letters. So basically, the, even though the sign is, is white in appearance, there's black vinyl on the back of it, and the letters will light up just the color. So it won't be like a giant you know, like square of light. It'll just be the letters of the sign itself lighting up. What do you mean by the back of the sign? Well, inside the back of the face all right, is, is black except for where the colored letters are. So when they put lights inside of it, it's not going to be like a white square with colored letters. It's just going to light up the colored letters. On both sides? On both sides. Yeah, I've got the thing here. On both sides? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. And, and so the white, sorry, I'm sorry, just to be clear, the white part won't be illuminated. The one part, the, yeah, just the letters will be illuminated and the, and the logo for Eversource. So they're not looking to be too obtrusive, you know, like in, um, it's, I mean, any other questions? It? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Tom, I'll um, let you start. Two points. One, I agree with Lee about the skepticism of why you need to illuminate the sign to show people where to, you know, if they have the address, people come from out of town, they go to that address, they see a big sign that says Eversource, I think they're going to find it without it being illuminated. That said, I, I personally don't have a problem with illuminating the letters. I mean, it's, it's, it doesn't seem to be obtrusive. I don't know if there's anyone here. I'm Okay. Andrew? I, I had a question about, um, I, I guess it would be okay if you just, if you had the sign and then you had like a flat, a floodlight, you know, on the ground that, um, I think that's where, a lot about right, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I understand why, um, is there any existing sign there right now? That sign in the picture exists now non-illuminated. Oh, okay. Basically, when they changed over to Eversource, we got a permit. They wanted an illuminated sign. The building inspector said you can't have one. So we got the permit to put up a non-illuminated one, and then we're coming for the special permission asking to put lights in it. But I guess what I was saying is so, I mean, one of the things you could, that you could do is just have a, like a 
floodlight on the bottom that just shines at it and then you know you wouldn't need a special permit for that and i'm just thinking about you know there's a bunch of other commercial properties right in the same area and uh, i don't remember exactly what type of signs they have but i think I think no. those are signs that just have a like a spotlight floodlight on the bottom that signs. So my, you know, my, I don't know how I. Well, any come any down kind of illumination thing. has to get a special permit. That's unless you're on Route Nine. I, I don't no, think you need so. it on Route Nine also. Yeah, I don't think so. I think the bylaw to allows illuminated signs, but if there's internal illumination, that's what that's what triggers the. Yeah. That's that's what's limited to Route Nine is internally illuminated signs. All right. So I I think it makes sense to have an illuminated sign, but you know the if you have just the floodlight like everyone else has, and so my concern is just that you know how is EverSource different than any of the other real businesses in terms of having the internally illuminated sign versus just the light from the spotlight. I mean, basically, it's an emergency facility. It's not a not a business that like people go to, you know. You light up your police station and your fire station. Okay. Mr. David? Um, I have no issues with this. I think it makes sense. I think the internal lit sign makes much more sense than a floodlight. Um, floodlights caught, have issues with um, sometimes uh, they get covered by snow or they get, they get uh, the bulb goes out or the or something some branch or whatever falls on it or uh, or it get or it gets shine shined in the wrong direction and maybe oncoming cars may see it may blind them um, internally lit signs are a much more modern look and I get the reason why Eversource wants to do it, it makes sense to me uh, I'm assuming this is going to be on 24 7 or at least through the night it will only be on for the night. Like if, if you guys have recommendations, they would, you know, like some towns say you have to shut it off after a certain time, right. but then they would want to be able to turn it on if there was an emergency. I mean, I, I, I would normally think about maybe putting in some time constraints on a sign like this, particularly something that's off Route 9. Yeah. But because there's really no homes around there, and because it's pretty much all commercial right around there, and you're only a couple hundred yards from Route 9, mm -hmm. um, I have no issue with the internal sign being on 24-7. You have, David, just to correct you, you have um, 57 units above that property that see that sign behind the Gobankian property. Yeah, but that's, 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 uh, that's quite a distance away. Well, it's an issue, but that's why the other signs weren't done that way. That's so. still quite an issue away, and it's, it is a different yeah. elevation. I don't have a problem with the sign either. I think it looks pretty good as as presented to us. I, I, I'm not a big fan of the floodlight I, idea. Um, I mean, if there were if there were abutters here that had an issue with it, I'd, I'd be, you know I'd be interested in hearing what they had to say. But apparently, do we have an abutters? You no, know, there aren't. So I, I think it I think it looks great, and I'm in favor of it. Okay. He's not allowed to talk. I, um, I don't have a major issue with this, but I do have an issue. And the issue is something that David brought up because I've looked into this prior to, and I don't, I don't have a problem with it illuminated. But I want the board to make a condition, or I'm going to recommend the board makes a condition, that the sign illumination is on standard hours of operation. And if there is an emergency, then it gets put on for the 24-hour period of that time. But I see no reason why it should be 24 hours a day, every day of the week, seven days a week for nothing. But if there's an emergency issue, like he stated, of trucks coming from all the different places or whatever, that it gets put on on those hours. So I think as far as the sign goes itself, I don't think there's an issue. The standard hours of operation for the sign would be from, you know, in the after, depending on the dock. But what time do you close at night normal? Um, the facility is like 24 hours. What? The facility, there's people there sometimes all the time. It like doesn't happen very Yeah, but the main business is there. When is it open? The offices, when do they open and close? Um, there's no real offices there. Right, this is not a, this, this is, this no, is customers, a, yeah, th a, I think this is an emergency facility yeah. that is, uh, that is on 24-7. Yeah, this is not, not a, a typical it, Eversource yes, facility. Yes, it is a typical source 
that they do all construct all installations and everything out of that building. Everything. Now, but the point is, don't we want to put hours of operation so it's not on at midnight or two o'clock yeah. in the morning? You know, you shut yeah. off at ten o'clock or something so that you know, it does have permit permits for sense. hours of operation. Um, I guess it does. Yeah. Okay. I well, the thing <laughs> is, the thing is that I think my recommendation is up to you, the board, is that we make a, a limitation of the hours of the sign, and it can go until eight or nine o'clock at night. And then that, in the case of an emergency, it can go 24 hours a day, which I think that would overlook the whole thing. The, the, the major issue with this is, and it's something that I want, I want to have asked the board to discuss later, is that the sign by law on the town of Southboro needs to be changed. And this would be something that would, you know, it, it, it would change this and make it easier and better. There's no question about it, because my personal experience that with the existing sign by law, it's, it's not proper, it's too old. So um, it's up to the board what they'd like to do. Um, any comments or what do you? you want to close the public hearing? Would, no, no butters, right? Right, there's no, no butters. Yeah, we got that. But there are no butters present, so no public payment. So um, what does the board consider? I mean, I, I personally don't have a problem if it's illuminated 24-7. I mean, we had recently with the, with the Volvo dealership, and I know we put constraints on that, but with that, I didn't have a problem with it. it yeah, but that's on. not 24-7. I know, but I didn't have a problem if it was. Yeah. Um, so same thing with it. I don't, I don't see a problem with this. I don't think it's going to be something that's going to adversely affect traffic or, or anything. I, I don't think it's – I mean, it, it appears it's going to be nothing – too bright or disruptive. No, the, the, the other thing you have to that's, that's just what I'm saying. I, I don't I don't have a problem with the 20 the, 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 Go ahead, David. Um, I, you know I I feel the same. This is an emergency facility. Um, by setting times when the thing's lit and when the thing is not lit, obviously it, it defeats the purpose of it being an emergency facility because you get into a routine where it's on till it becomes more of a business sign than a than a 24/7. Um, emergency operation facility um, you know at what point do we determine who's going to police when there is an emergency if a snowstorm's coming or if a, or if a rainstorm they flip the switch they keep it on is there any way to police that there's no way to police that when when if if we're saying oh in an emergency you can turn it on what does that mean you know when do you turn it off so I think just to make it I agree with Paul I think just to make it just easier Seeing that there's no, no one uh, is none of the abutters, no one, no one from the town, um, the community is is objecting to it. I think that we should just keep it 24/7 if if that's what they want it to be 24/7. That's that because that's the whole idea of this facility. This is not a normal nine to five bank. That's that's my opinion. No, uh, the, the big question about it is it's not in the application. It is not in the application. Twenty-four-seven. I mean, I, I'm in favor of putting hours of operations on it, just because I, you know, if it's no, there's no emergency and they're just operating, what's the point of having a sign on at two o'clock in the morning, if for no other reason, eating up electricity and or whatever? Um, you know, I don't, I don't. Again, I'm skeptical about the real need to to light it to, to because emergency people coming from out of state won't be able to find it if it's not lit, lit up. But I don't have a problem lighting it up. And if we put a condition on that, you can't, you can't illuminate the entire thing. Only the letters that they're planning to do, it'll be a, 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 a it, it, it'll be, it won't be obtrusive. But I, mean, I don't, I don't see any reason to have it on 24 hours unless you guys really feel like. I, you need I don't think to. they would put it on 24 hours. What? I don't think they would put it on 24 hours. Well, that's why we're going to make the condition. Yeah. I mean, I recommend also. The thing about it is, and and, and something of what David said. I think we, we classify it, clarify it as an emergency of outsiders because they do, if there's a telephone line, a power line fall down on Route 9 or something, they have to go out and fix it. But it's their internal night shift that is doing it. It's only when they have people, like they've stated, coming from out of town to come into the facility that it would have to be light lit, which is very rare. I mean. I don't know in the last couple of years that we've had anybody come in town for anything like that. But the emergency stuff 
They do, it's a shift, a 24 hour day shift in the building. Their crew comes and goes, they know where it is and where they're coming from. So they really, and they have, and they have not had it there for 18, 20 years, they've been there. There's nothing been there and they've been the same type of facility prior to this, right? Yep. So, you know, so to make it good in the, in the long run is that we agree to put the sign up, but I don't think there's anything wrong with it, and eliminate the hours to a certain time at night and that it goes under an emergency thing after those hours for outside emergency companies because themselves, they're there, they don't. Yeah. Do you agree on that? Yeah, that's fine. You don't have a problem with I don't that? Have a problem with that, no. Andrew, you haven't made a comment. Uh, I just want to say I, I agree with um, Paul and David that I, I think that I don't see the problem with having it 24 hours just because the, I think some of the conditions we're talking about, about what's an emergency and what's not, are can be difficult to enforce. So I think that's where I fall on this. Well, the thing you have to realize, you go forward with that, and then you're going to have other people come in and want 24-hour signs too. And that just... I mean, I, I guess I'm viewing this as just a regular commercial sign that, you know, if, if it were Volvo or something like that, we wouldn't, we wouldn't want them having the sign on all night. No. And again, if, in, if the stated purpose for an emergency is we're all agreeing that they can keep it on all night if they have people come from New Jersey at 2 o'clock in the morning, go ahead and put it on all night if we're giving them that. But, you know, I continue to think what's, what's the point of, of having, and they're not even planning to have it on all night anyway. Hmm. But, you know, if we were treating this like a regular commercial sign, we wouldn't. We, we would put some. Well, if the applicant doesn't have any so issue with it, we can put restriction. I don't know. Well, that's what I'm saying. He agrees. He I'll, work, I'll work with whatever you guys want. Yeah, he's like, whatever. All right, so why don't we come up with some some parameters? I propose no later than 10 o'clock at night and no earlier than are 6 o'clock in the morning. Are we still open? Is the meeting still open? No. Yeah, the we're still discussing this. We haven't. No, no, no. We've closed the public hearing. We closed the public hearing? No, we have not. Oh, okay. No. I thought we did. What, what, would, what would be. What would be hours that you would like to see then or what would be hours that would work well to you know like 10 would be fine and, and then like in the morning when you still have it dark until 7 maybe like from say 6 to 7 or 6 to 8 when, when no earlier like, than 6 no later than 10 at p.m. Yeah, that's okay fine. that's that work that's if that's if that's works for, for if that's fine with me then if it's okay with the applicant I think that and I, I think that's the I think that's proper I really do yeah. And in the, in the sign. I mean, in the summer, it's not going to be lit up as much because you're probably talking about a couple hours at night. And and but it. even like if you have an outside, and, and, and I like it to specify outside emergency yeah. because if there's an emergency internal, it's their own people that are doing it. Yeah. They don't need, right? Am I right to say right. that? I mean, unless you have a hurricane or something in the summer, it's usually in the winter from ice storms. And but stuff whatever, like even that. if I don't care when it is or how yeah. it is, whatever it is, whenever you have to hire or get somebody to come from someplace else, you want them to be able to find a facility. Right. So that would be when the sign would definitely have to be lit. And I think that's definitely a way to go. Um, is there any, any further discussion on this? I'm the good. Excuse me. Yes, and we're gonna, Karen, what we'll do is we'll close the public hearing and as we vote, then we'll finalize that in writing for you. All right, so as everybody is agreeable, we have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the hearing. We have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, now the, the next step on the, on the public hearing is to write the condition that we've discussed. So, Tom, are you, any, David, who wants to? Take a stab at it. Uh, I make a motion that we approve the application subject to two conditions and one proviso. The two, con two conditions being that the illumination can only be um, uh, between the hours of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Uh, except, the proviso is, except in the case of emergencies. And the second condition is that only the letters can be illuminated, not the entire sign uh, structure. Yeah, but you know, that, that's all right, except for the fact that it needs to be somehow worded somehow of an outside emergency because they could have an emergency right now and have their people have to do it. That's the except an emergency, no then there's no limit. They can be 24 hours. Yeah, but I, no don't think you need to, I don't think you need to say that. In I don't think, I mean, there's no, no one's going to enforce there's it. There's one, one of you at a time. Just Go ahead, David. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think we need to say that. I, I think we, I don't think we need to say outside, inside. You know, this facility controls all New England. 
So you could have areas, Eversource employees coming from different parts of New England coming to this facility that are not familiar with Southboro, even though they're Eversource employees, because they don't necessarily have to come here all the time, to get whatever they need to get, transformers or poles, to go to you know, New Bedford or to Boston or wherever they go. Because it's not just this, this small little area, this, this um, facility. But that's why we, we, we so, we've been you know, they, they subcontract out not only out-of-state contractors, but they, in emergencies, they'll subcontract even in-state people. So at what point do you put, is if it's an in-state person, out-of-state person, you know, uh, does internal, the light stay on them? Is the light not? Internal management. I, I, There's 24-hour people that work there that do that. Yeah, I, I, I think we're getting, into the, we're getting into hours. the minutia too much. I think that we should just keep it simple. I, I don't think we need to have that kind of wording. If we just say emergency, we can leave it to the building inspector to, to determine whether they're abusing it or whether there's a true emergency. Right. Yeah, I guess no, it needs to be defined. You can't just leave it open-ended. You know, no, it doesn't have to be defined, and, and it can be, it can, you can allow the building inspector to interpret that. I don't have a problem with that. I don't think it needs to be defined because whenever we can spend a half hour with, a, with three paragraphs worth of definitions and still not cover everything. So I think that we should leave it up to the building inspector. And an emergency is an emergency. I think that, I think that uh, I don't think Eversource is going to be abusing it. This is not something that they'd be abusing. Okay, yeah, clarify the motion for Karen. Did you catch it the, way, the first time I wrote it? I think that captures it because it just says you know the hours of operation are between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. Okay. Except in an emer in case of emergency where it, it can be 24 hours. What, I've got another question because I, I honestly disagree with all of you. Um, what if we put a condition on this that this gets reviewed by the building inspector in six months and see as we've done this in other lighting issues in town of Southboro, after it's up and done, if there's any complaints or there are any issues, there are that it would have to come back in front of us again, which is not a major issue or anything, but then that would go along with what you guys are saying and doing. But then if there is an issue that comes up, that would give the building inspector the right authority to bring it back and, and re review it. I think the building inspector has the authority already. If they think the if they think the if they think they're not following the terms of the conditions that Tom set forth, then they have the right to come come before us. They don't need we don't need those to have it. Can just take zoning enforcement action. They don't have to come before us. Right. Exactly. So I don't think we need to do it. Right, which we've done in lighting issues before with different commercial buildings that we've had. So it gives them the right to do I, what I, you I want them to do. I don't have a problem with that. That's fine. I, I, it gives them the right to do what you guys want to do, but then it also, if there does an issue come up about it, that then it's something that can be looked at again. If there are no issues, it just goes away. Right. right. Okay. And are you fine with that? I'm fine. Yeah. Karen, you know, is, yeah. would you explain, read, read to them the way you're going to do that? Reserve the right to review the elimination of the sign um, within six months, up to six months after the um, operation of the sign. Okay. The caption. Okay. A second. Did somebody make, did I make the motion? I made the motion. Did we, make a, yeah. did we have a, what? Did we have a motion? Yeah, yeah I, I think I made the motion, enunciated, we supplemented it through our discussion that no, Karen just made read. the motion on the now three issues supplement the and aggregate motion. The, the issue of the six month thing. So those are the two, con three conditions of the motion. But I think we're voting on the, the entire package now. Do you want her to read it to you, Paul? Am I, am I, okay, am I okay with this? Yeah. Okay. So I'm, yeah, you're okay. I'm good. All right. <laughs> all, right we, all right. So th the motion's on the table, so I'll second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It'll take about 14 days to get filed. Sure. Thanks very much. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Perfect timing. Oh, how about that? Yeah. Jeff, do you want to come sit on? Come up on. I'm recused. I come uh, to the farm. Tom, you're all set. You can leave. Okay. All right. Thank Jeff, you. you can sit on this one.
The board is opening up an application from, from uh, where's the application? I'm sorry, I gotta find the right one. Here. Cumberland Farms? Yeah, for Cumberland Farms. Karen, would you read the application into the record, please? The Board of Appeals of the Town of Saltboro will hold a public hearing in the hearing room of the Saltboro Townhouse, 17 Common Street, on Wednesday, July 29th at 9 p.m. with regard to the petition of Cumberland Farms 365 Turnpike Road, Saltboro. The petitioner is seeking a special permit to upgrade signage, including adding LED pump toppers and an internally illuminated diesel sign. Relief is requested under Section 174-11-2D. No sign can be illuminated between 10 p.m. and 6 a.m. and Section 174.113. Illumination shall be by white, steady stationary light. A copy of the application may be reviewed at the Office of the Building Department at the townhouse during normal business hours. Leo F. Barlini, Jr., Chairman. Okay. Um, this, this start this off, just a clarification. This application, yeah, Karen, go ahead. Read the um, decision of the Planning Board, recommendation of the Planning Board. Right, so this is from the Planning Board, Jennifer Burney, Town Planner. Uh, reference Cumberland Farms 365 Turnpike Road it in accordance with 174 section 174 11 of the code of the town of Southboro at its regularly scheduled meeting of June 8 2015 the Planning Board met and reviewed the proposed request for a sign for Cumberland Farms 365 Turnpike Road Southboro and report reports that one the sign scale is in reasonable relationship relation to development scale, viewer distance and travel speed, and sign sizes on nearby structures? Answer is yes. Two, the sign size, shape, and placement serve to define or enhance architectural elements of the building, such as columns, sill lines, cornices, and roof edges, and do not unreasonably interrupt, obscure, or hide them. Answer is non applicable. Three, the sign design is in harmony with other signage on the same or adjacent structures and provide reasonable con continuity in mounting location and height proportions and materials. Answer is yes. Four, the sign material lettering, lettering style, illumination and form are reasonably compatible with building design, neighborhood contact and use. Answer is yes. Five, the sign size, location design, and illumination are not judged to, be pre to present a safety hazard to veh vehicular or pedestrian traffic. Answer is yes. The board voted to include the following conditions in regard to the application. The board requested that the pump toppers be set at three brightness with two layers of film, 3M Scotchel marking film or similar. The board requested that the diesel sign have the same illumination as the pump toppers set at three brightness. Okay. Um, the other thing is on this application, there is a letter from Cumberland Farms directly giving her the, uh, giving the sign company the authority to do the permitting. Okay, ma'am, go forward. Good evening. My name is Carolyn Parker. I'm here representing Cumberland Farms. Also with me is um, Ken um, McIntyre. He's here representing Cumberland Farms. He's the area sales manager. So if you have any questions for him, he'll be here to answer them. Um, one thing I just want to mention, which I didn't really catch it maybe at the planning board is- Excuse me, ma'am. You need to talk into the mic, so. Is it on? Yeah. Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, one thing I just, when she read this is it says the board requested that the diesel sign have the same illumination as the pump toppers with a three brightness. The the diesel sign is a, what we call a scroller price sign. So it's just, it's illuminated and there is no brightness level on it. So I don't, um, I don't believe that we can do that. I would like to talk about the signs um, first, the pylon sign, and then talk about the LED pump toppers, if that's all right with you. Um, the pump, the, the existing pylon sign currently has, as I mentioned, a scroller price sign. The scroller price sign is, you know, if you know what a scroll looks like in the old days, you turn them sideways, there's three mechanisms inside the sign. 
um, that you push a button and they turn and move the numbers to change the price sign. Currently, there's a blue panel for regular and a green panel for diesel. Cumberland Farms has started what they call a smart pay program that allows people to get 10 cents off a gallon of gas if they are a member. So what they'd like to do um, on the price sign is to convert the green diesel to blue that will say smart pay. So the regular price will say say 260, the smart pay panel will say 250. That will remain static at all times. Now in order to let people know that they have diesel at the property, they want to add a one foot high by six foot wide diesel price sign that will have a green background and white lettering. The white lettering will be the only thing that's internally illuminated. Um, so that whole sign is currently internally illuminated. We're adding six square feet to the sign. Um, the reason that I had to come here for that particular sign is because of the hours of operation, which are five in the morning to 11 at night. Your bylaws say six in the morning to 10 at night. So I'm here for that sign. Um, for that particular reason. Do you have any questions on that particular sign? Um, just the diesel sign? Just adding the diesel and converting the diesel to smart pay. Uh, there's any questions by the board? I don't have any questions. Is the, is the Cumberland Farms at the top, is that going to be illuminated? Or is it, you said just the letter? Well, no, no the, uh, that sign is currently illuminated. The whole, the whole sign's gonna be Right, the whole sign is gonna maintain the illumination. Um, but what happens is at night, it's just the blue and the green that's illuminated. The rest is opaque. Oh, okay, I got it. And then on the, the prices, it's the numbers and the, the word regular. So it'll be the numbers and the word smart pay that'll be illuminated. And then the we have diesel. The green background will be opaque at night. So it'll kind of look like it's floating. All right. I don't have any questions. Any questions? Nope. Okay. okay. Now I brought a pump topper here with me. No. But I have questions. Oh, all right. Sorry. Okay. The issue with the signs added, I don't have a problem with illumination or anything on the sign. The only thing is you're increasing your signage. Correct. On the property. You are over the legal limitation of signage in the town of Southboro. So how is that being handled? The building inspector didn't tell me I... I didn't get denied for overall square footage. Well, you have you have extra square footage by adding these extra signs. The other question I have is on the smart pay, is that going to be on a different sign or the same sign is going to change? I know in other Cumberland Farms, it's the same sign and it changes every 35 seconds. That's if it was an LED sign. LED signs, if you had an LED sign, we would try to propose what we call an um, a smart pay alternator that would alternate the prices from zero to 60 seconds. It would go this price, that price. Right, because this is a scroller price sign, we're not able to do that. Therefore, that's why we need to change the panel, the green panel from diesel to smart pay, and we want to then let people know there's diesel there, therefore adding the six square feet. Um, I, I'd have to look back to see. Um, That's no problem with that. Uh, what's allowed for square footage? Because he didn't tell me that I was over the allowed square footage. I mean, uh, I think that when we go forward with this even further, let's we we'll go forward and we'll discuss the square footage after. Okay. Yeah, because I, I don't know if you can let me you know. You can go forward now. The, okay. I mean, there's no other issues with that. No. I thought I thought we were allowed, if I'm not mistaken, 100 square feet on Route 9. What? I thought we were allowed. That's what I think. No, you have a total limitation on the total property. And your, your building has many window signs. And those have to all get added up to the same quality as the square footage that's allowed. 75 square feet. 75 on square Route feet 9. for the pylon. No, for everything on the property on Route 9. No. Is that correct? For the pylon or? Well, you're allowed, to, excuse me. I'm looking at it. Ma'am, I am telling you, you're allowed 75 square feet on the total property. OK. So they must, have an, they must have an existing variance for the, all what? the, they must have an existing variance. Neither. They must have an existing variance for the signs for the property then. No. Then they're over 75 square feet already. There is an issue. 
I, I don't know what to say. No. Uh, they, they put up what was approved probably during the site. No. It wasn't approved. <laughs> 75 square feet, I was on the board. We approved 75 square feet. So what's there now? I don't know what the total number is, but it's way over what it was. So I, I think it, it technically, all, I think it shouldn't bother. The thing is that if the board makes approval on this, it's all well and good, but a recommendation that the building inspector review that issue and it's up to him of wh whether what has to be done or doesn't have to be done. That's all, just to make it proper. So he can take and, you know, if it has to be changed, it does, or if it don't. But the building inspector knows better than we do on that issue. It's just that the signage, because the pumps, when they were originally approved, they put a camera system in them, put a video thing that wasn't <coughs> even on the approval sheet. We've since shut that off. What? That's not, that's not currently working anymore. They shut those off. When did they shut them off? I was there the other day they were working. Well, the, all right, all, yeah, all right, here, here's what I'll say. There is a screen, and that screen has to have something on it, but it's not like a TV screen, and it doesn't change all the time. Well, it did. So, it has since they well, put it in. a year ago when I was here, it was shut off. It will be shut off tomorrow. That's all I can tell you. I know the videos are not running anymore. No, the videos aren't running. It, what happens way. is the pumps come that way, and that's just the way they're made now. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, I want to ask, sir. Did it get, use that mic, please? I'm just curious. I mean, I go get there all the time, and it's been on. They, they have um, just a regular advertising on it. That's it. it. It's shut off. There is no video playing on there because we've had complaints, and we've taken care of that. So it's, like it's a static display now. We yes. We used to have, like, a video loop. But it does have audio. Like David There's Hasselhoff audio. There and the whole yeah, thing. we have Well, you need audio pumps. as far as right. people being able to talk to the person. You have to use the help so button, you is it, everything. You know, at the operation of the pumps, you have to have audio at the pumps. For our people to talk to the customers and also for the customers to request help from us. So you have our audio. That's like a that regulation has, type yeah. of thing. The thing is, I, I know, it's just something that needs to be looked at. And I would just say we make a recommendation and let the building inspector do exactly. it when we get to that point. That's yeah, when I came like over a year ago, um, we did shut them off the next day. So if the video is not playing, that's the way they come now. You know what I mean? It's not like Cumberland Farm says, oh, I want, you know, the, the, it's just they're made that way. And you don't know until you get them in, I guess. So they weren't trying to do anything, you know, tricky, sneaky, whatever. <laughs> no problem. Okay. And we did take the smart pay sign down from the front of the street, if you notice that, a year ago. And I believe that's still back there somewhere. We got And that will that we will go. Yeah, that will that will go away if you know the signs get right. approved. Right. The main sign. Okay. Any further comments, ma'am? The toppers. What? Oh toppers? yeah, we're gonna do the pump toppers. All right. Let's do the pump toppers next, please. All right. Now, bear with me when I show you this. Sure. This. Excuse me, I completely disagree with the prices on that sign. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to do it. Let's do it. That's right. the prices you get if you deny me, no more. <laughs> I mean, they dropped but, eight uh, cents a gallon today. <laughs> all right, so basically what I wanted to show you this side of the pump topper because this is the pump topper that when I came a year ago we were originally asking for. This was a pump topper that would say smart pay. It would alternate, and it would go from smart pay to non-member. All right, and it would alternate, and it was, they were all going to be a certain brightness. Now, having done these hearings for a couple years now, and going to towns that aren't too, you know, keen on these type of signs, we've come a little a long way as far as trying to make the towns happy. So now I'm going to turn it around. It's still going to alternate because I can't stop that, but just let me show you what we're doing. Here is we have a film that we take and we put it over the whole pump topper. So what that's doing is it's reducing the glare. This pump topper is set at five brightness. We're going to reduce it down to three. I can't do that because the little button won't work. So I apologize for that. Um, this is one I just take everywhere I go. 
Um, so basically what we're trying to do is show you that we're trying to work with you. They are set back 50 feet from the roadway. They are parallel with the street. They're not meant to be seen from the roadway. They're meant to be seen by the people at the pump. The reason we're asking for the LED is because people have to go out there every single day and change those magnetic pump toppers. Um, you know, it's a time-consuming task. There's eight pumps there. They have to take cones. They have to shut the lanes down. Um, you know, in the weather, it's icy, it's snowy, it's whatever it is. They have to go out there and physically change these. And that takes somebody from the store to go outside and do this. It's a safety issue. Now someone's left alone in the store or whatever. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we had a heck of a winter last year. Um, hopefully not a repeat. But... You know, these are things that have to do. As far as the brightness, you already have canopy lights above you, so I don't think that these are going to, you know, shoot, shoot off any additional illumination that should be um, a problem. Um, you know, like I said, we are trying to reduce the glare with the uh, two, you know, coatings of thing, and then... Is that is that represented by the right side, what, what you think is going to end up looking like? Yeah, it's going to be even a little bit lighter. Is that the one of the town recommendation from the planning board? Would be that light there. Yes. Okay. And it's even going to be a little dimmer. So It'd like I said, it's for the people at the pump. It's so the people, because currently we can change the price sign from within the building. Now we still have to go out daily and change the prices. So they will remain static at all times except be changed once a day. Now Same when, as the sun. When the store closes at night after a They get shut off. Those get shut off too. Right. The only the, thing everything is shut off. The only thing left on is emergency lighting. Right. Yeah. Correct. Any other questions? Okay. I, uh, question I have is that is not going to fluctuate back and forth. No, it'll remain static. It's going to remain Change static. once a day. Okay. Yep. And I don't have a problem with the, the, the thing, but I do have an issue on the brightness of the light. I think that the second light at night should be that brightness versus the lower brightness because the no, sign... That would just be one layer of film then. Right, because I mean, this is my personal, because I've seen them in, in other stores and stuff and some places where you go because they're under the canopy and everything, the lighting is so, you, it's kind of hard to see it. I mean, if I don't have my glasses, I have a hard time. <laughs> and I just don't know if there's something the, the board wants to consider that at night, what do you call that? They can go to. Can you do that with the lighting, or is that not able to have two different? No, the pump. It has to all be one. It would all be just yes, one, right. so you can't go the other way. Yeah, it no. has to be one standard thing for it because it's all electronically controlled, so you can't alternate, you know, breakers and everything between the different yeah, signs. Right. Okay. So I mean. So it, the issue is that you, whether you should have one layer of the film or two layers of right. The film, right? Right, right. So, I mean, it's something the board to consider if they want to go to one or the two. I think the middle one, I think, is a little... And if you go to, um, I guess it's Irving in Westboro. Yeah, What's the next gas station above you? Irving? Uh, no, that's a golf, isn't it? The one that just opened. Oh, yeah, that doesn't help us. That That's bright. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's very bright. Very bright. Yes. It is. It's, and it's, it's brighter than... See, Cumberland Farms standard for their signs, no matter what LED sign, starts at six. What is a, their standard? Their standard is six. So we're going to so drop what it. What is it on one? We're going to drop it down. That's set at six right now. So we're going to drop so it down to three. So one is six. Yes. Okay. So we're going to drop it down to three. Um, you can't go any lower because the the bulbs will just burn out, and you'd be constantly changing the bulbs. So. All right. Um, uh, you know what? I I kind of agree with Lee. I like. The, I think the. I mean, one thing I. You're talking about one of the busiest intersections, our most prominent intersections in Massachusetts. It's the intersection of Route 9 and 495, two of our major thoroughways. Having a sign there, I mean, it's for gas. It's, it's, a, it's a nice function for the town, for people all over the state. Um, so as far as the brightness, it doesn't bother me if they, whatever, I think they've done a tasteful job on all of this. It, it's it's perfectly reasonable for a gas station. It's you know we don't have neon. This is this is one of our flagship locations in South Pole. So, I mean, I'm not an expert on what works best for lighting, but one thing I do know is red lights are the least 
uh, difficult on your eyes. That's why they put them in submarines and all the that. Thing other is, good stuff. The, the other thing is, if you look, if you look at the, the pumps on, the, on that location coming westbound, you're almost on top of them before you can see them. You know? Well, I think and most people will be looking at these. That's right. You have the bigger signs to look <laughs> at. If you're coming eastbound, it's down in the, the hole, so you really can't see them. So I don't personally think it would be a major issue to have them in the second luminous versus the first three. I wouldn't I mind think, six. I, I, I don't think it I mean, you're, you're literally in the middle of an interchange. I mean, I don't understand. It's, it's on the, but it's, I don't have a problem with it. It's yeah. on a cons existing site. That's, that site's, you know, a little tighter than it should be. We threw that before. To, to be up. truthful, they're coming down, they're coming up that road and going down that road. They're not even noticing these signs. That's yeah. right. They're not even noticing them. They're seeing the big white building with the green striping around. That's what catches their eyes. The signs, you know, they're nice for us, for the operation parts of it. Um, you know, because we, we uh, handle the safety of our people. They don't have to go out there changing it, you know, with, with uh, eight cars going at a time. It's a big safety factor for us and everything where we can it just makes, press a button. It makes and sense. It and the other, the, other thing, the other thing with it is the, the, the issue of the brightness. I don't think because of the way it's located that that little bit of difference. No. Personally, I don't think it's going to make an issue traffic-wise or anything. Well, if you but have trouble in, seeing like you apparently do. <laughs> in general, nice. for older people and stuff, <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's an advantage. Yeah. To do that, I really do, yeah. and and so that's not. An, I mean, how do you people feel? That's fine. Oh, believe me, we would take we yeah, take the take one the on the left. One. I'll take the first one because again, that's. So the one on the the one on the far left left is that's with no three brightness, but no, no film. No, that's, that's six. Oh, that's six. That's six. That's, six. that's six. that's a standard industry right there. Is six. We so just. it's going to get even dimmer. So maybe you don't need the a one film. The one in the middle is level of brightness three but with one layer of film no the one on the right, right is three or actually three is even a little dimmer no film this is one and this is two right and the, the, those are all lighted to six right so otherwise you say leave it at six with one film if you're fine with that one yeah i, I think that that's fine six with one film i mean i'm fine with six with no film if i'm you fine want. with six I, maybe we shouldn't even put any restrictions on it i don't know let 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 the uh, let the applicant decide what's well, best. Well, I, I I think that due to the general rule and regulation that we ought to have some some sort of a restriction, something which the planning board recommended. But I think a little stronger than what was recommended would yeah, be. I would be happy with the in one general film. public. The applicant and would be happy board with agreed. One yeah. we, have no, we have no problem with that. That's easy. To, that's easy to fix. Okay. Yeah. So I you don't have to specify any brightness in the condition you just say one layer of film just one layer of film yes. with the yeah. six so that's okay. uh, that okay changing their their application right what they submitted the application for a certain brightness right but our condition is going to change that right karen right. what does the two. application say So we can approve that, but have the right to go up to a three brightness with one. But what is three no, brightness? What does that mean? Brightness? Three brightness. Versus well, six. what it is is your bulbs this big at ten, it gets smaller. The bulbs get smaller oh, as okay. the brightness. So which goes one down. did you put in your application? Well, I I thought I had to kind of put with the planning board, you right. know, recommended. But, but so we, recommend, oh. we did the planning board. So she put the planning board recommendation. Yes, right. That's why it's that right. way. Right. So, so I mean, I'll, as I stated can, before. They go in front of the planning board for recommendations prior to filing the application with us. Right. So when she filed the application, then she did it. So that's why it's filed that way. Right. So normally you wouldn't be able to give you a greater than what they applied. applied for. Yeah, that makes sense. Why? We, we could if we wanted to. But why couldn't we? We could do it. So I guess I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> what? Well, if you're I guess I shouldn't have done that. Well, if you're satisfied with this. Yeah, level. we have a, we have other towns that that's what we're at. So well, you have if 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 you have what was advertised submitted and, and advertised. Yeah. What? You, you can't you house. can't do more than what was advertised. Seems to make sense. Uh, or yeah. you could, if you wanted, you could refile the application. You could refile. And well, turn around we'll, and no, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll leave it as as it is and then what? go from what? there. 
What your recommendation is, that's what we will go with. Okay. All right. So we can stick with the two film. The two okay. film with the with the uh, three six I, loom light. Right. With the with the uh, with the with what? the two uh, layers of film. Yeah. It's three as brightness, two film. Three three, 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 that's three per brightness the with the six loom light. That's per the application. <laughs> so it'd be the three, three brightness and then two films. That's per the application. So, yeah. so I I uh, that's good. I just learned something that I didn't know. Yeah. Because I, right. so I thought that you guys wanna, wanted me to put what Any the further discussion? Said. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, you want to close the? Okay, oh. so I'll make a motion. We close the public hearing. Second. Oh, I motion to close the public hearing. I second right. it. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, we agree on the three brightness and the two Woody calls. Is that, Cole, is that agreeable with the board? Yep. Uh, okay. And. Um, is the board agreeable to ask the builder inspector to review the sign qualifications of, si yep. of square footage for the total property? Okay. Yeah. Yep. We're, we're agreeable to have him review. To have the just have him review it. Just have him review it. it. That's his. You know, his. Yeah, he's, he's the enforcing him officer. Go as through a it. Condition of our approval of it, or just as a general statement? No, we make it a condition that he reviews it. And, and just make sure it's proper. That's right, all. Right. But then we also got to, I would approve this as well. What? And improve this as well. We were just approving that yeah, in but, your first date. But we're approving that too. Yeah. Right. So I, I think but it doesn't matter. It's 75 square feet for the total property. No, no, I'm just saying you left Yeah, we're going to approve. Yeah. yeah. They, we're going to approve it all. Yeah. Okay. Right. No I, quite I think, what, I think what, what you were saying was that the having the building inspector review the total signage that really just has to do with the pylon but it doesn't have to do with the now no that's not true no it has everything every, no, it's everything every sign on the every sign because, on the property because because the what way it, that bylaw is written it's it it's the sum there were, of there were two the square footages the sign get the sign so the and, and it's pumps. his interpretation okay. of the but signs everywhere there were two square footages one was on route nine and one was not on route right. nine. correct yeah. Yeah. So let the building again. inspector one was on route nine there's a square footage and then there's one not on route nine no. So no, um, I mean in the bylaw. That's what. One it's square footage. Right. I haven't, I haven't looked at it in a while. What close the public hearing? Actually. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, so what I would recommend is we we approve the application in its entirety as written, but we'd also ask that the building inspector review the square footage as a as a condition of the approval. Okay. Um, do we have a second I on the to motion? This then. Second. Do we have a second? Is there any, any further discussion? I have one thing. We did yes. talk about the hours. There was some discussion that the build, the building, the uh, the permit calls for six to ten, and they go five to eleven or right. something. But, so we need to. But that's already. But that's a part of the total application. All right, I know, but we need to make sure that we're comfortable with that. If we're approving the application. And that's saying six to eleven. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. I don't have a problem five either. I just want to make five sure. To five, five to 11. Five to 11. That's what it's currently running at. So yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. Add that to the decision. Yep, and the hours of operation being. It it, all right, so then I would I also. Wouldn't, I wouldn't. I don't know. If I don't know if excuse me, Karen. I would leave it on. They must already have an approval. Excuse me. That's one thing at a time. Public no, hearing's closed. Public hearing's closed. Yeah. Public hearing's no. closed. Yeah. So, so I, the hours are I, I mean, well, what we could say is we could just say that the building inspector would review the hours of operation and go. the uh, signage issue. That's all. Let the yeah, building inspector. That'll work. Yeah. yeah. And let, Mark, let Mark take care. I, I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Do I so do that Cameron, again? Do you? I'll set on the, the decision. So to approve the application. Hold on, please. Go ahead. Wish she was asking for me to say it. So approve the application, as provided with the condition that the building inspector will review the total square footage and hours the hours of operation. Okay. All right. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank okay. You. I need a motion that we um, close our, our meeting tonight and schedule our August 26th meeting at 7.30. I make a motion that we close the public hearing tonight. Excuse me one minute. Karen? Oh, yeah, we could. No, because we have nothing else to do. 
that's the only thing on the agenda and you know and who knows if they don't even come so yeah, nothing seven. else though we do at 7 30. all right so i make a motion to close the public hearing tonight and and uh to have our next meeting at uh seven o'clock on the 26th 7 30. 7 30 on the 26th of august and just so everybody knows there are the three of us that have to be here and yep. as i stated before no you weren't here but we stated before if any one of us can't be here we have to notify karen immediately or to have to know because we have to continue the public hearing the two that are available come in and we continue the public hearing we cannot have a meeting a public hearing but only two members correct the applicants aware of that it was brought up by mr monchant that's the way it is okay all right okay second all in favor okay. we're done <laughs>